Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be drawing the network diagram of a project and determining the critical path. And in this case, it's a project that has multiple terminal activities or like finishing or last activities. Basically, there's a couple activities in here that don't have anything that comes after them. It's actually not apparent from the, uh, the table of dependencies just yet, but we'll see what happens when we get into the network diagram. So uh, in the table of dependencies, we're given all of the activities, A through I, each of them we have given been given their predecessors and the duration of each activity uh, one at a time. So what we don't have right now is the project duration. That's something that we're about to calculate in this video. And then we also don't know when the activities start and finish. That's also something that we're going to be able to determine by drawing the, uh, the network diagram. So to get started with this, the easiest way always is to draw a really rough sketch first uh, before we move on to the, the more formal uh, final copy. So we, to, to get started, let's take a look at the first activity here that has no predecessor. That's going to be A. We're going to find all of the activities like this. In this case, it's only one. And we're going to start with that on the left and just a rough sketch. Now, when we move down to the next one, uh, we can see here activity B depends on A and activity C also depends on A. So both B and C depend on A. So basically, we just need an arrow coming out of A that's going to each of these. So it's going to be B and C. Now, moving on, we have activity D. It depends on B, but actually activity E also depends on B. So D and E both depend on B. So again, it's gonna be a similar situation where there's two arrows coming out of B. One is going to D and the other is going to activity E. In the next one down, we have activity F. It depends on B and C. So we have B here and C, and we need F to depend on both of those or to come after both of them. So one arrow is going to come from B and the other is going to come from C. Activity G here depends on D and E. So up on our rough draft here, we have D and E both leading into activity G. It's going to be like this. Then activity H depends on E and F. So E and F both have to finish before H can start. So again, it's gonna be one arrow from E and another arrow from F going into H. And then activity I here depends only on activity F. So once activity F finishes, also we have this other activity I can get going. So when we look at our rough draft here, we don't have any crossovers, that's really good. If it happened that we had a bunch of arrows crossing over, then I just recommend redrawing it until you have the minimum amount of crossovers, that's kind of the goal. But when we look here, we see we have one starting or initial activity, which is A, and then over on the right side, we have G, H, and I are all like final activities. Neither, and none of these three have any activities coming after them. And that's going to be kind of significant when we get into doing the forward and backward pass. So as we kind of move into the formal copy now, let's just set up our convention here. Um, I'll bring a labeled box over here. And this is going to kind of be the legend that we're following. So we're going to have the activity in the top middle. We'll write the duration in the bottom middle. And then top left, we'll write early start. Top right, we'll write early finish. Bottom left, we'll write late start. And then the bottom right, we'll write late finish. So now we can go ahead and actually just redraw the rough drawing, but replace each of the nodes with one of these little boxes. And now with that set up, we're ready to start the forward pass. So we're going to start with our initial activity here, A, and we're going to start that at a zero for the early start. We're going to add the duration. So zero plus two is two, and that's going to go in for the value of the early finish. Then we take the early finish into each of the next activities early starts. So it's going to be a two here and a two here. 2 plus 3 is 5 for the early finish of B. 2 plus 1 is 3 for the early finish of C. Now, when we come into activity D, there's only one predecessor going into D. So we're going to bring that uh, early finish from B into the early start. So that will be 5. For activity E, same thing. We'll bring the 5 in. But for activity F, we have two competing values. We could have the 5 from B or we could have the three from C and we take the larger of the two values. So we're gonna bring in the five. Then we can add the durations. So five plus two is seven, five plus four is nine and five plus one is six. For the early start of G, there are two predecessors. So we'll have to take the larger value. So we have seven or nine, we're gonna take the nine. Uh, for activity H here, we also have two predecessors. We could bring in the nine or the six. We have to bring the larger value. So we bring the nine. And for activity I, there's only one predecessor, which is activity F, so we'll bring in that six. So six plus three is nine, nine plus five is 14, and nine plus three is 12. 
Okay, so now we find ourselves in a situation where we have three finishing activities, G, H, and I. They all have three different uh, early finishes. And what we do is we take the largest one, so it's going to be 14, and we're going to put that as the late finish for all of the finishing activities. So we'll bring it into this position, 14. We're also going to bring it into the late finish of activity G, and we're also going to bring it into the late finish of activity I. Now we can work on the backwards pass, basically doing the opposite of the forward pass. So we're going to subtract the duration from each of the late finishes to get the late start. So 14 minus three is 11. 14 minus five is nine. And 14 minus three is 11. All right. Where we only have one successor, we're going to just bring that number straight across. So from the late start of the successor into the late finish of the predecessor. So we're gonna bring that 11 right in here and we can subtract the two duration so we get the late start of nine. For activity E here, there's two successors. So what we do is we actually take the smaller value. It's just basically the opposite of the forward pass. So we have 11 or we have nine. We're going to bring the smaller value in. We're gonna bring that nine. We can uh, find the late start here by subtracting the four from nine, so that's going to be five. And then for activity F here, we also have two successors that are competing, so we're going to take the smaller value. So we have nine or 11, we're gonna bring in the nine. And again, nine minus one is eight. All right, activity C here, it only has one successor, so we're just gonna bring that number straight across and we can subtract the duration right away and we can get that uh, seven for the late start. Activity B here has three successors. So there's three competing values. We have to take the smallest. We have nine, we have five, and we have eight. So we have to bring the five in. And then we can have five minus three for two to find the late start. And then here for activity A, we have two successors. So we have to bring the smallest of the competing values. We have two or seven, so we have to bring the two in. And then we're going to have two minus two is equal to zero. So if you're, so if you started with your early start of zero for your initial activity, you have to finish with a zero for your late start. If there's only one starting activity, it has to be the same value. If there's multiple starting activities, which could happen, at least one of them has to be zero. More could be zero, but at least one has to. If you get to the point where you get back to the start and you don't have uh, the, the same value here, that means that you've made a math error somewhere along the way. So um, now what we want to do is we want to identify the critical path and the critical path is made up of those activities that have the early start and the late start being equal or the late uh, early finish and the late finish being equal. If these two are equal, the other two will be equal as well. So we can go and highlight this one. Activity A is certainly on our critical path. When we come to look at B and C, well, B is two and two, five and five. So this one is also going to be on the critical path whereas C is not. Two is not equal to seven, and three is not equal to eight. When we come into the next region, nine is not equal to five, five is equal to five, and five is not equal to eight, so activity E here is on the critical path. And in this last section here, it's not G, it's not I, but H here must be critical because those nines are equal and those 14s are equal. So we have our critical path here labeled in red. The critical path is A, B, E, H. Um, what the critical path means is that if we delayed any of those critical activities by even like one day, the entire project will be delayed. Um, right now, the project duration is 14 days, but if any of the critical activities were delayed, it would be pushed out. Let's say one of those activities was delayed for one day, the whole project would be delayed for one day. The non-critical activities have what's called float and slack, and I have made some videos on that as well. Um, but basically they have some amount of play that can be uh, they can be delayed for without actually delaying the entire project. So yeah, hopefully that is helpful. I'll put up a link to another video where I go over another uh, network diagram and critical path problem. So if you're interested, do check that one out and hopefully you have an awesome day.